Hi, you guys. We are back for another Facebook Live this morning. Um, my name is Allison Dillard. I am a math professor, author, and mom of three. You can learn more about me and my free resources for math and parents at allisonlovesmath.com. And I'm super excited to um, introduce to you Jens Scholl, our guest for today. Um, she, she's moms. She's gonna come and she's gonna help you with career and money and life stuff today, which is balancing a lot of the craziness that we're going through. So Janice has spent her entire career talking about money and business. So we've, we've got a lot of experience coming to us today. She's been a commercial banker, a consultant, a mentor to budding entrepreneurs, especially female entrepreneurs. She is the host of the Money, Career and Motherhood podcast, and she is a business career and money coach to mothers to help them give con gain confidence and understanding about money, career and business topics related to motherhood and family. So welcome, Janice. I'm so excited to have you here today. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. So tell me about your podcast. How did it how did it come to be? Well, you know, I, I loved my career in banking and it was really interesting to learn all of the ways that companies implement business strategies and financial solutions and to help them with that. But I found that there were few women in the space. And so I made a commitment then to help women as they were starting businesses because I felt that I could add value because I could be the bridge between the two worlds, if you will. And when I was working with women on their businesses and their startups, I found that the same themes kept repeating. And these themes were repeating for other women at the same time that I was going through some challenging times with my own motherhood situation. I had just, um, my, my first child was just born and I like to say she was a little more labor intensive than we were expecting. Um, I was in grad school and I was a full-time banker. And so life was really challenging. That is and really crazy. It was, it is a crazy it was situation. Crazy. It because, was crazy. You know what? Working full time and being in school is crazy enough as it is being a mom and, and working full like, but you put all three of those things together and, and yeah, that's like at the top of the madness. It was. So I actually, somebody had said to me once, wow, I really admire like what you've taken on. And I said, you shouldn't admire it. It was pure ignorance. Like I didn't know what I was in for, <laughs> <laughs> but we got it done. And so these themes kept repeating. So women were saying, hey, we're so excited to have an advisor and a mentor who understands us because we look at things differently than men do, but we need that financial and business expertise. And the other thing was women were starting to talk to me about their businesses and their finances in their business, but then they would start to ask questions about their personal money situation as well. So many women I was finding weren't comfortable with money or business as they relate to their personal or profession, professional life. And then women, we don't just start businesses because we want to make money. We often start them because something isn't serving us well in the corporate world. So we're looking to recreate that um, professional engagement for ourselves while doing something a little different that works with our lifestyle. So because of that, uh, you know, the podcast was born because I think it's important to learn all about money and how it affects your life so it can take away the stress and put you back in the driver's seat of your family. Perfect. Oh, that sounds that sounds so helpful. It's something that so many women can benefit from. I think, you know, definitely as you know, as I am sort of starting out, you know, I've just recently started doing Facebook lives and I just um, recently launched a membership and I have a couple of my very first courses sort of coming up online. I think there's definitely, you know, I'm seeing sort of making that jump from, you know, just, um, just teaching and writing, you know, to creating a business. And there's definitely, you know, a need for, there's, there's so much to learn at the start, I guess is, is sort of the fast thing to say, you know, and it, it can be a little overwhelming because it's, different than I don't know, it's different than just learning everything in school where there's just a set structure to, to follow and you know exactly what what to learn and when um where it's just sort of it seems like a lot of chaos to to, to work through <laughs> it is it's kind of organized chaos and organized sometimes chaos. not so organized chaos <laughs> but you know there's so much about running a business and starting a business that is complementary to how we should be looking at how to run our families too Ooh. because Right now, we're living in a time of unprecedented uncertainty, mm -hmm. right? And it's in, you know, when you start a business, it's hard sometimes to know what 
it, it's so dynamic, right? It's hard yes. to know what is happening because you did something <laughs> and what is happening because you just happen to be at the right place at the right time or whether or not something else would have been more effective. So it, it is, there's so much to learn and so much to analyze and to figure out, hey, like what's actually working? Right. And, and what, it, what is maybe a tip that you have for parents or moms who are struggling with that? So when it, for, for business, for women who want to start a business, um, I recommend getting out there and doing things. Uh, don't like a lot of us think, okay, well, we want to start a business and I don't know how to run a business, but I have some skills that I can use um, to, to create this business. And they want to get training. They want to get, they want to invest in education that will help them. And, and there's so much out there that I, I want people to just try things out. And I think it's so important for us not to spend a bunch of money mm-hmm. trying to create something that you don't even know what works yet. Mm-hmm. So yes. it's, it's really in today's world and with how fast things are moving, it's experience, but having a goal and a destination point and then slowly adapting as you go through that. And that's what I recommend for everyone with their families right now as well. Like we are, we are trying to make decisions for our kids' schooling. We're trying to make decisions about how we're going to work this next year um, with potentially kids at home again. And, you know, we just, we can't make a plan today that says, okay, well, we're going to get there. This is the linear path to get there. We need to make an approach that says, okay, well, we're going to be really adaptable and we're going to sense check things along the way, but this is where we're headed. I really like that advice. You know, I think it's very easy for parents to be lost in the chaos and stress of everything that's going on right now. And I love your advice of just where's the destination? Maybe just like take take a little bit of time then, right? To think, you know, what if everything worked out really well this coming fall, right? Like what's in an imperfect school situation, right? What would what would we be happy with, right? In fall to say like, you know what? We pulled this off. We did really well. What is that situation for you? And then to just sort of work towards that, right? And it's not that you're not having a game plan for it, right? But it's, it's knowing that you can't know the entire game plan between now and September, and it's going to have to, you know, mold or change, right? As you go. Yes. Yes. And we, so when, when I work with my clients, I really advocate for values-based budgeting. Okay. And so this is when you're on a very financial level, but it also applies to our lives, right? You know, you, you want to think about, okay, well, what does our family value? Yes. And a lot of times we don't think about it. We know we have values, mm-hmm. but it's not intentional. Yes. So it's sitting down and saying, okay, what does our family really value? And what do I personally value? And then how do I align my time and money to support those values and to make sure that I'm growing in those areas? So our family values education for our children. We, we think that that's super important. And of course, I think most mothers all think that education is very important. But so then we have to take a step back and say, okay, well, we know that this is important. We will prioritize it over some other things in our family. What does that look like this year? Right. And, you know, a lot of mothers might be saying, well, how do I do that? And here's a super math term for you. We're (laughs) going to look at probabilities. You know, I, so what I do. Yes. I'm super excited to hear about this. (laughs) Yes. So, you know, as a banker, we looked at the probability of events happening and then the loss in, of the potential event happening. And, and this is a really great concept to apply in your household. And I just want everyone to know if you, if you have ever been uncomfortable with some of the math concepts or, or things, I was not a math person, but somehow I became a banker and I'm super comfortable with it and I love it. So you grow to get good at this stuff. But so it, a probability and impact matrix can really help us make decisions right now because we have so much uncertainty and we get caught in the tornado of, well, what if this, what if this, what if this? Yes, yes. But we don't always play out, well, what if, how likely is that? Mm -hmm. Is it really gonna happen? And then if it does, what's the next step? What's the impact of that event? So a probability impact matrix, matrix is basically saying, okay, what's next? So for school, yes, for instance, yes, yeah. um, a parent who is trying to figure out what school is going to look like for their child. Now, many of us have options between remote and in-person schooling, but if you choose in-person, it's highly likely in today's world that in the fall, maybe during sixth season, our kids could be back working remote 
for a period of time. Right. So right. asking yourself what if mm -hmm. is a good thing to do because it is a high probability that that event will occur. Right. So if that happens, we need to build a strategy for what the impact of that will be on our household. It's going to be different for everyone, right? Mm -hmm. Because some people have a work structure that they have to work around where they have to be in person. Mm -hmm. uh, some people have more flexibility in their schedule. Mm -hmm. uh, it depends on the age of your child, but, but we need to play it out and use that analysis of what is really the probability and then if the event happens, how big is the impact? Because sometimes you can even have a small probability of an event, but the impact, impact is so big that mm -hmm. we need to build a risk mitigator in order to feel comfortable with how we're gonna proceed. Yes, I think that's really helpful advice for parents right now, because I think it's it's a very easy for parents to get get stuck in the decisions that schools are making right now and to be upset about whatever the decision is and whatever side that you're on. Um, but really, ultimately, that's that's not helpful. I think what you're saying is helpful is plan for the different scenarios. You might not want your kids to be at home, but ultimately you might not have control over that choice. Yeah. And so planning for that probability given, you know, depending on where you're at, or, might be anywhere there's a good probability of it you know so even if it's a scenario that you don't like planning for it will help in, in planning for it i think will also ease the anxiety of it if you have yes. thought through well who is going to to watch the kids if i i can't you know or who is going to even if it's just zoom calling with them to, to help who is the the support system in this difficult situation to bring in a support system and and what happens if we get sick during that scenario and what happens if we both have to be at work there are all these really difficult questions and, and scenarios within this and it is helpful to think ahead about that because i know a lot of the stress is coming from not want not wanting to think about it or not knowing what to do in those situations and the earlier you just tackle that Yes. The faster really the, the stress will diminish a little bit. Yet humans have an optimism bias. We know that this stuff happens, but we don't think it happens to us. We mm -hmm. don't want it to happen to us. And it's almost thought, like by admitting it could, it could be possible. Sometimes we feel like we're bringing it on. But the reality is um, preparing. I, I, we have to prepare, not panic. Yes. And so we can hope for the best, mm -hmm. but we need to make sure that we are prepared or the reality of what could be. Yes. And you'll never say, gee, I wish I had planned for this class. <laughs> yes, that's right. That's and right. it works for so many different scenarios. You know, there's a lot of people who are underemployed or unemployed or are concerned about their employment status. Mm -hmm. And, you know, thinking through, okay, well, if my, if my job is at risk, you know, what could I possibly do if I lose my job today, what other ways can I make money versus waiting until the event happens and hoping that, that you don't lose your job? It's, it's going to put you in a different position if the event happens. So if you say, okay, well, I know I have these skills and I've worked a little bit freelance in the past and I can just ramp that up, that's super different than saying, I have no idea what I'm going to do. Yes. Yes, no, that's really, really good advice. And there are so many parents right now who are facing that, you know, facing, you know, either uncertainty or unemployment um, or just being completely overwhelmed with work, which could potentially lead to wanting to make a change as well. So I think it's yes. that's really good advice. And, you know, one other thing that I was thinking of, because you were talking about scenarios where it might be a small probability, but the impact is huge. And I was having a, a conversation the other day with a, another mom about that. And it's, it's that probability of, you know, in the fall, suppose the kids do go back to school and we do all get COVID and there, there is that small chance that the whole family could get it and that we as parents get really sick. And, you know, I think that was sort of an, an underlying stress that we had that we weren't talking about it or planning yes. for um, because you're just trying to like, it's just, it's such a nightmare of a situation to think that like, gosh, what if, you know, me and my husband happen to be the two people who react poorly to it and end up in the hospital. Like, what do you do now with three kids who have been exposed to COVID or might have it themselves? Yes. Who do you actually ask in that situation for help? Because typically it would be my parents and there's no way we're sending them over there right now. And yes. so, I, I will say that it was a very helpful conversation to have and to think about and to sort of plan out well. It's an extremely 
inconvenience thing to ask different, you know, relatives or friends, but who, who could we, and what would our plan be for that situation? Um, and in all honesty, that alleviated a lot of stress once we sort of thought through that. Yes. It, it changes the conversation from what if to what next, right? Yes. And, and that does give us confidence that we can operate through it. It doesn't mean that we're going to like it. Yes. I mean, oh, I yeah. want to go back to the 2018, 2019 school year, right? Like yes. not even last year. I want to yes. go back to the year before, <laughs> but that's not on the menu. <laughs> and, and so we're moving on, um, with the unfortunate circumstances that none of us want to deal with. And, you know, estate planning is, something mm -hmm. that I advocate every parent of minor children take on. And, you know, I, I work with the estate planning mom on talking to people about this topic as well. And nobody wants to think about the possibility that we won't be the ones caring for our children. Yes. But the reality is we will do a better job of picking who our replacement is than if we are unable to pick. And so right. putting in place that that contingency plan that we all hope never to use yes. is just, it takes one thing off of the list from what if this happens, because we don't have to think about it anymore because yes. it is a check the box. We built that strategy. Mm -hmm. Now we move on. We don't like it, but we have it. Yes. Yes. It's definitely, and, and tackling all of those little things, you know, one at a time, it's a lot to mm -hmm. think about on any given day or plan, especially with the estate planning. That's a, a longer process to get everything sort of finalized. Um, but it is helpful and it does relieve so much stress. You know, I had some health issues a few years back. And after that, my husband and I actually, I think that was sort of a wake up call for us, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. to go back and do that. But it is one thing in retrospect, gosh, had we just done that earlier before any mm -hmm. of those health problems, it would have it would have relieved a lot of stress while we were in that difficult situation. Yes, exactly. And that is, that is a perfect example of the probability is low, but yes. there is a possibility and the impact is too big to ignore. Yes. Uh, we had at the beginning of COVID, my husband had a non-medical or I'm sorry, not a non-COVID medical emergency and he, we could have lost him. And oh, it was, it was a moment. It was an instance. And it gave me confidence to be able to focus on him and what was happening in the moment instead of having that, what am I going to do if? Yes, worrying moment. about the what if. Exactly. Perfect. Um, so what are some, what are some other, I'm trying to think, what are some other areas where we could apply this? I love this probability impact matrix. Yes. Yeah. So, um, so I will tell you a personal story. I have a, I have a child with food allergies okay. and so severe nut allergies are really complicated and mm -hmm. I find it to be really hard to make decisions because we all want to protect it. And, and this goes to protecting our children right now as well, mm -hmm. um, out in the world with, with COVID. But, you know, when it comes to food allergies, you know, we, we have to assess probabilities and we have to assess the impact of that because the impact in our circumstance for certain things are not, we, we can't get to the impact. It's not okay for our family. Uh, so when we build what we're going to allow our daughter to do or not do, we have to account for the fact that we can never get to the impact of some events. So even if the probability of a reaction at school, for instance, is unlikely. We know that she would need her EpiPen within minutes and we make sure that she has one in her classroom. Not that the, somebody has to call the nurse and get it to her because the amount of time to unlock the cabinet in the nurse's office and get the EpiPen to her is too long. So to us, we make sure that we do certain things. There are, you know, we make sure that she has an adult who knows how to administer epinephrine with her wherever she is. And, and we teach her to take her EpiPen everywhere she goes. If she walks to the front of the sub to the playground, she has her Epi with her okay. because we need to make sure that we mitigate that in all circumstances. So it's, it's something you can apply to every area of your life mm -hmm. uh, where you have where you have significance, I think is the way to look at it. And if you don't have, you know, these medical or these extreme type events, it still really works when you apply your, when you set your values. So, you know, the whole taking a look at what does your family value? 
Well, our family values travel. We lived overseas for five years. We think experiences as a family are really important for bonding. Um, we really appreciate that. Well, we can't travel right now. So what if we can't travel for the next two years, like significant travel? We, we like to visit different places internationally, and I don't know when we'll feel comfortable to do that again. Well, what can I do in our family to enrich our family's experience to bring some of that adventure and learning into our household when we might not be able to do it the way that we used to do it. So really, it doesn't have to be a super dramatic event either. It can just be, how do you build what you want your family to be versus letting it just play out? I love that. It's taking what you want your family to be and you're given this imperfect situation, looking for an alternative instead of just saying, that's a loss, there's nothing that we can do and it sucks. Right. It's looking for different different ways to to work towards your goals. I love that. Exactly. So what are some what are some tips for for women in career with all of the uncertainty with with jobs or job transitions that are, you know, many are being forced into or, or not? Just there's just there's so much chaos, I think, going on with work. Do you have suggestions? For how yeah, to cope and, that. and there's so many different areas of it, right? There's yeah. the, how am I going to work with the kids at home mm-hmm. and manage everything? And then there's the job uncertainty side. And, and for managing the kids at home, something that I implement that it's not ideal. And, you know, I don't know if work-life balance really exists. I feel like the, the work and the, the life part, it's tug of war. It is not balance. Yes. In my never book. <laughs> And yeah, like it's, it's an aspirational goal, no doubt. But, but I think that like viewing it as tug of war, there's always more needed from me than that, than I'm available in either place. And and so it frees me up from feeling guilty about not being balanced. (laughs) So I give myself 30 days with different things. And, And so let's say, I know I have a really challenging 30 days at work and So I'm going to give myself some freedom and some grace to not be perfect at home. And maybe the kids are going to watch a little bit more TV, or maybe, you know, we're not going to eat like the most awesome health conscious food we always do during that moment. But I know I'm going to make up for it the following month because my focus will be back on a family thing at that time. And my work won't be now. The first month of school, I know it's going to be a tough transition this year. So I'm going to schedule my time that my family and my kids really are going to be the priority. Getting them integrated into school, whatever it looks like, Mm -hmm. is going to be my priority. I'm going to schedule myself and give myself the grace to not be awesome at the other stuff. (laughs) So that I think is one thing to do to think about how you're managing your work life. And then I batch everything as much as possible. I batch cooking. I batch activities for the kids by setting up little like craft things and stuff. Like I batch because I'm more efficient with my time. I batch with my work. Um, So any way you can look at like, Hey, how can I maximize my time by focusing on this for a period of time and then spreading it out is super helpful when you're trying to balance things at home and with your kids. And when it comes to the stress, conversations, um, yes. conversations with yourself and with your spouse mm-hmm. uh, and, you know, with your kids too. Mm-hmm. If you have older kids that are, they're, they're feeling when you're not talking to your kids about money, you're still teaching your kids about money because they That's know true. that things are going on right now. Mm-hmm. And they're either telling themselves stories to explain what's happening or you're talking to them about it. Yes. Yes. Oh, that's such a good point. Our kids are definitely following everything that we're doing during these difficult times, right? And they're, we're teaching them about money during a crisis. We're teaching them about how to handle stress during a crisis, how to, to handle our relationships during crisis. There, there's so many things that they're, that they're learning from us right now. That's such a good yeah. point. I just picked up something um, in a book I was reading, and it was talking about how, you know, apprenticeship is so important for kids to learn Mm -hmm. how to navigate the world outside. And that concept, like the concept of apprenticeship, I was like, what if we looked at parenting as an apprenticeship? 
and our what what mm. they're our little apprentices for is making decisions. Yes. So it's almost like we take all the stuff that we make decisions about in our heads and we and we talk it out and we make it age appropriate, right? Um, but but when I look at my kids as my mini apprentice, then I talk to them differently because I explain things to them more so than just say, this is how it is. Right. And I think that's a really important thing to remember in terms of finance, because I do think we all tend to do that in certain subjects. There's certain subjects that, for, you know, we're just more comfortable talking to our kids about. And so they they learn those things more through our conversations. But it's the ones it's the topics that we're a little uncomfortable about or unsure about ourselves. And finance is definitely one. I think math is another one that parents struggle with with their kids because they're they're afraid actually to tell their kids that they had struggles with it um and 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 to talk about it and talk about you know how they they could have worked through it or maybe how they ultimately did um but those conversations i think are specifically really important in the topics that we're uncomfortable talking about absolutely and you're so right that math and money are two top things that we don't talk to our kids about enough. And honestly, whether we have a lot of money or a little bit of money, we are not talking to our kids enough about money. I was meeting with some high schoolers not long ago and talking about money topics. And one of them was telling me, you know, my parents will, my parents are conscious of their money. And sometimes they, you know, they tell us, no, we can't get something or whatever, because it's not in the budget, but I don't know how they make that decision. And, you know, this was this the topic we were talking about is what what do you need to know about money to go to college and feel comfortable that you can be successful managing your money and stuff. And and that was really important because a lot of times we do tell our kids no, but we don't tell them why. And, And if they don't know why, then they can't think, okay, well, that is a decision I would make and he and and help me build the skill to assess whether or not this is important to me in the future. And the reality is for most families, we cannot have every single thing that we want. So so for people who are uncomfortable talking about money and especially my kids, like my kids want everything, right? (laughs) But when your kids ask you for something and you are saying no or yes, explain to them why. Yes, we we can buy this, we can do this thing because we've saved up enough money, we've, we've, decided that we aren't going to spend it in another area or no, we can't spend money on this thing because we are saving for this other thing, or we do have other important things that the money needs to spend, the family needs to spend its money on. It, it helps them just say, Hey, wait a minute. Okay. Mom and dad are thinking about this. There's not some Oracle at home, like hidden that is saying, yes, you can spend money on this. No, you cannot spend money on this. Yes, definitely. And Yes, gosh, that's such good advice. And I think if you're if you're afraid to talk to your kids about that because you're not actually even planning and budgeting and thinking about those things and it's just sort of chaos and impulse in the background with the finances, then a great place to start with that goes back to what you were saying earlier to actually break down the finances and, and look at it. And then once you do that, when you take that first step, then you have a positive place to start talking to your child about finances. Exactly. You pra- if you practice values-based budgeting, it almost gives you the answers that you need to start the dialogue. So, it, and what that means is you start by tracking every dollar you spend, every dollar, because all of us forget where our money's going. We operate yes. on autopilot more than we want to. Mm-hmm. And so putting it into categories and saying, hey, wait a minute, my money's going where? Now you can make decisions about what you want your money to be as a tool to support your family. Awesome. Perfect. And as for listeners, if you're watching this, you can check out the Money, Career, and Motherhood podcast to learn so much more about all of these different topics. Absolutely. We'd love to have you. Awesome. So let's see, you have the podcast. And actually, can you um, maybe talk about where people can find you? Because all of this is so fascinating. I'm sure there will be people who want to, to follow up and, and learn more and get more advice. Yep, you can visit my website at www.moneycareermotherhood.com. And I have a Facebook page and Instagram on this at the same name, Money Career Motherhood. And there is also a Facebook community that I would love to have you join so we can continue the conversation and talk about more of the tactical stuff of how do we apply this to our own personal circumstances. 
perfect. That's awesome. It's the tactical stuff, the how to's of actually doing it. That is so helpful. So great. Well, thank you so much for coming on. This was, this was amazing talking to you this morning and I appreciate having you on so much. And for everybody watching, have a wonderful day. And if you have questions, always leave them. Even if you're watching um, on replay, feel free to um, leave any questions and I'll, I'll always check back later. Okay. Have a great day. Bye.